today. I'm here today to talk about uh, ethics, and in particular ethics in relation to artificial intelligence. But before I get into the specific issues which affect uh, ethics relating to artificial intelligence, I wanted to give a little bit of consideration to ethics itself and uh, what constructs we have which support our theories of ethics. So when we talk about ethics, we're talking about essentially how to make a judgment between the right and the wrong thing to do. Now, an important point I want to make at this point is that all decisions are ethical. Often we think only of particularly challenging questions as being ethical. But when you stop and think about it, the things you do in your everyday life you always are stopping and thinking subconsciously, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Now, this becomes habitual, and therefore, we're not actually saying, is this right? Is this wrong? We go around in our daily life just doing things which we know are not doing harm to others and are therefore good in some way. Where we suddenly stop and think is when we are worried that we might be doing the wrong thing. And that's an ethical dilemma for us. But it doesn't mean that all those other things we do, which are naturally good, aren't already ethical questions. It's simply that we have to stop and think for longer about some of these dilemmas. And that essentially is the heart of ethics, is what do we do when we're in that dilemma situation? Now, one of the key features to consider about an ethical situation is, is the person actually able to take an ethical decision? So, for example, we, would, we wouldn't expect a three-year-old child to be able to make ethical decisions about complex matters. Indeed, we may not even expect a three-year-old child to make ethical decisions about <clears throat> uh, quite basic matters. So this gets into the concept of capacity, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. And capacity is a precursor to responsibility. That is, to be able to take responsibility for something, we need to have capacity. And of course, as we know, forms of incapacity are, for example, a me mental illness, age, or a number of other factors. So once we have established capacity, we can say, okay, that person has capacity, so they have the ability to take a decision here that we see as valid, and that is how what we would describe when we think about ethics as agency. Once we know there's agency, the next step is identifying responsibility. So responsibility requires an individual to have control of a situation and certain aspects of a situation and also to have full knowledge of a situation. Now, the reason those two factors are important, if we stop and think about it, is because we know that someone who maybe doesn't know they're walking into a certain situation can be responsible for an outcome. Or if there's a genuine accident and someone can't influence the outcome and therefore have control over the situation, we wouldn't say they were responsible either. And so if we're going to blame someone, we need to identify that they have responsibility in a certain situation. So as I mentioned, the two key features are they have sufficient knowledge of the situation and they have control over aspects of the situation. Now, it's that first factor of sufficient knowledge where professionalism comes into play in a really interesting way, because only professionals can take responsible responsibility in certain situations where professional knowledge is required. So an amateur may come along professing to be a professional, as it were, but they could not be seen as responsible because they don't have the professional authority in that situation. 
because they don't have the knowledge of that situation. So it's this factor of responsibility allows for praise and blame in a certain situation. So to recap, we have agency, which is the capacity to make it take a decision in a certain situation. And then we have responsibility, which means we really have a full understanding of the situation and an ability to control that situation. And it's those features which allow us to then look at the distinction between good and bad, which in many ways is a value-based distinction. Is this better or is this worse than uh, if I do this than another situation? So essentially it's value-based or axiological to use the technical term. Now where this becomes interesting in relation to artificial intelligence ethics is we know that we are asking digital systems and AI to take automated decisions in the course of their day, daily operations. Now, where this creates a, a unique distinction with the human is if you think back to when I mentioned that humans sort of intuitively know that all these things they're doing are good on a normal basis, and then they get struck by an ethical dilemma, their identification of that ethical dilemma is affected by their ethical sensitivity, as it's called. And ethical sensitivity is simply the ability to notice that there is a problem that we need to deal with of an ethical nature. Now that sounds simple, but if you look through the history of ethical dilemmas and scandals that have happened, all too often organizations and individuals haven't stopped long enough to reflect whether there is an ethical problem with something they are attempting to do. And so it's been that failing of ethical sensitivity that lies at the heart of many ethical problems. Now, if we extrapolate and think about artificial intelligence that doesn't have that human intuition or instinct to allow sensitivity to ethical problems, how then can we see AI as having the ability to identify an ethical problem? There is simply no ethical sensitivity there. So how can we be secure in the knowledge that problems will be identified and ethical decisions taken? Now, having looked at responsibility, one of the complexities which arises is where we work in large complex organizations or for example, just in terms of our large complex societies, we may encounter situations where it's very difficult to say someone is individually responsible for something happening. Indeed, when you think of all the infrastructure that's required for our everyday lives and for everything we do in the workplace, you, you could argue that it's very hard for an individual to be responsible for everything they do because they have such a requirement for the help and support of others to allow them to take the actions they do. And this has led many to start thinking about whether the concept of individual responsibility, which is very, let's say, popular as a concept in Western culture, is indeed the right way to think about responsibility. So for example, if you look at a large complex organization, we could maybe think of it in terms of complicit responsibility. Now the concept behind complicit responsibility is that we as individuals all work together, we're all interreliant on each other, and that therefore no one individual is fully responsible. There is also there is always a complicity 
around the responsibility which we have. Now, you've probably encountered this in legal terms where we have, for example, joint and several liability, which is very similar to responsibility, where we all take a share in responsibility or liability for a situation. So it may sound uh, fanciful at first to say we're all complicit in actions taken by an organisation, but perhaps there is some truth in that. This is even more so the case when we start to consider artificial intelligence. When we consider the complexity of the number of organisations that may be involved in the production and development and design of artificial intelligence, and the organizations that deploy it, and then how all those different digital systems and AI interact with each other, we start to see a very complex map of interactions between different systems, different organizations. And so perhaps when we start to think about AI, we need to have slightly different forms of thinking about responsibility. Maybe it's more about complicit responsibility rather than individual responsibility, as we see all these maps of responsibility do all together. This is a contentious concept because we typically find ourselves in situations in a society where people look to blame an individual or look to praise an individual. And if we start saying our responsibility and indeed our accountability is complicit, then that perhaps undermines a central tenet of our society. So the next question I want to ask is, considering what we've already covered on responsibility, can a machine ever be held responsible? Can artificial intelligence ever be held responsible? Now, we all know that we've been in situations where AI has taken a decision or a digital system has taken a decision. And we have to stop and consider, bearing in mind what we know, that all decisions are inherently ethical. It may be they're good, but they're still ethical. Should we have AI or machines taking decisions on that basis? Are we comfortable for that to happen? Now, if we get back to thinking about what we said about the requirements for responsibility, so a machine can have knowledge of a situation potentially, they may have control over aspects of the situation and they may be able to influence its outcome. But the big question is surely, do they have capacity or agency? Typically only humans have agency. We would never, say a dog is responsible for biting someone we would typically blame the owner and we certainly wouldn't sue the dog if we were bitten by the dog we would sue the owner so bearing in mind we couldn't sue the ai can we say that ai has agency and if it doesn't have that agency can it take decisions? Because after all, we know responsibility requires that agency. This is one of the central debates about artificial intelligence ethics. And it's why I wanted to explore responsibility to the extent we did earlier in this recording, because it's really critical to understand what role AI can play can it replace the professional? Can it replace the human decision maker? This is an area of huge debate, as I say, a huge amount of the literature on artificial intelligence ethics explores this concept of whether AI can ever have agency, can a robot ever have agency? And I think the key issue for us is until we know the answer to that question, can we as responsible individuals allow a system which is de facto not responsible to take decisions on our behalf? One further point I'd like to raise, 
is if we know AI can't be responsible, but it's taking highly complex decisions. And if we have a concept of individual responsibility rather than complicit responsibility, surely we are creating a dangerous situation where individuals are giving given responsibility for something they cannot control. Because as we also know from our discussion about responsibility, we know that control is a requirement. So perhaps we're getting into the perfect storm here where AI can never have agency and can therefore never be seen as fully responsible. Yet humans do not have full control and therefore cannot be seen as fully responsible. In which case, however we analyze responsibility, we find a serious lack in the concept of responsibility at this stage. And this undermines some of our most basic ethical thinking. 